Hello guys, my name is Felipe from Backend Horizon and today we're gonna talk about Docker Dev containers and how Docker Dev containers can help you to transform your development environment. When we think about local development environments, we think about the traditional way of installing our dependencies like Java, Node.js in our own machines. And if you work in a team, you know that this is quite problematic because it's very easy to have compatibility issues between you and your colleagues. Sometimes you are using a slight different version of your colleague and this can bring problems to your project. This is a very common source of the issue of works on my machine. And there is a better way of managing this instead of installing the common uh, version manager software where you can manage uh, a lot of different versions of Node.js or Java in your machine. And Docker Dev Containers, it's perfect for this. First thing, uh, Docker Dev Containers, it's like a toolbox where you're going to have all the tooling that you need for a project. All the necessary software is going to be pre-installed for you. And the most important thing, you and your colleagues in your team, you guys are going to have the same tooling and the same version, especially. That's very important. And, and if you got a new colleague in your team, he just needs to clone the project and he's going to have the same environment as you. So to start to work with dev containers, it's pretty much simple. You just need to have VS Code installed. Uh, I know that IntelliJ also support uh, dev containers. Uh, I didn't test myself, but I saw in their website saying that they support it. And in VS Code, you're going to need two things. The first is the dev container extension. So you just come here. Let's look for dev containers. And you should see or install this extension. Uh, if I'm not wrong, the remote SSH extension, it will be installed automatically when you install the dev containers, but it's worth to check um, if it's installed or not. So in order to start to work with dev containers, uh, there is a specification for this uh, that we need to follow. You can find more details about this specification in this site, containers.dev. Here you can find everything about dev containers. It's an open specification that uh, in theory you can reuse this in any tooling. That's why you can use on VS Code and IntelliJ and I guess uh, every IDE needs to provide support for this. But it's open so everyone can use it. I'm going to use uh, this project about AWS CDK and from my previous video, if you want to take a look. Uh, but what we're going to focus here is just in this folder, the .dev containers. This is the first step if you want to work with that containers. Every project that wants to implement this specification, it needs to have this folder with this name and inside that folder a dev container.json. Here it's where the magic starts to happen, okay? So you're gonna see that first we can give a name to our dev container and what's the base image that our container gonna be built on top of. Uh, in this case, I'm using this image that is provided by the project of dev containers. You can find a list of supported images in their GitHub so if you come here to the image project inside dev containers, if you go to source, you will see a list of languages or even base images like Ubuntu that you can choose. I will choose JavaScript node. And here you can see all the different versions of this image that they support. And yeah, just choose the image that it's suitable for your project and you can use the image here. You can see that uh, that's very nice because I've chose 
I image here that is TypeScript with Node. That is exactly what I use in my project. And uh, despite what you use, other language, Java, C Sharp, uh, Node.js, whatever, you can just choose what you use and your dev container gonna be built with this language is already on it. Another important thing that can make your container even more richer, it's the features. Uh, you can find, again, in their websites, there is one page, uh, here available features, a lot of different features that you can put on top of the image that you choose. So as you can see here, uh, in this project that I've built, uh, I said that on top of the TypeScript with Node.js, I want the AWS CLI and also AWS CDK. So when you build this image, all this functionality is going to be there. So, and when your colleagues build also this container, it's going to be the same. You're going to have the same tooling and all the features with exactly the same versions. So do you see how dev containers help you to have a consistent environment between multiple people working together? So that's way, way easier than just manually or and manage different versions of the same tooling. After that, they also support some customizations that I guess that's specific for each IDE. In my case, since I'm using VS Code, uh, I mostly use extensions. Probably there are, there are more options here that you can check in the documentation. But uh, usually uh, what I like to use is pre-installing extensions that are important for my project. And when you have an extension, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, like dev container, for example, you just need to come here in the identifier and you copy and paste what is the identifier for your extension and you put it here. So when you and your colleagues build this container, this extension is going to be pre-installed for you. And as a remote user, I said that I want to be a root in this container. So I have uh, no limitations in what I can do in this container. So something that I want to show you is that the first time that you open a project that already has a, a dev container configuration created, you're going to see uh, this suggestion here to reopen in container. So you want to click on that. So in my case, the container built pretty fast because I read done before. So there was some cache on that. Uh, but if you want, you can also uh, use the command palette and rebuild and use this command to rebuild the container. Yeah, so you can rebuild the container or build again without any cache. After the build is done, you can come to the terminal and you're going to see that everything that we ask to be installed is going to be already available in the terminal for you. AWS, uh, Node, AD20, CDK, I think it's CDK version maybe, yes. And yeah, uh, as you can see, everything that we specify in our uh, dev container file, it's available. There is another way that you can build containers. If you need more flexibility, uh, instead of being just dependent on this list of image and these features, you can build your own uh, container. For that, you can replace image and features with your own Docker file. So that's the normal Docker file that you would create and you just need to create another file and a docker file here inside your dev container folder and yeah and this way you can point to your docker file and you can create a way more customizable uh, image it's way more flexible and yeah and you and your team can use the same file and you're gonna have um, exactly the same 
dev container with same configuration, same version, everything that we discussed before. Also good to mention that everything that I said, it's here uh, in my article, in my blog. Uh, I will also leave the links below and everything that I said and also the code, if you want to copy and paste it, uh, it's going to be here and you can copy and test in your project. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And I guess see you in the next one. Thank you.